One of the things that we all know is um, very Didion-esque and that you've talked about already today is um, staying on the surface um, and using... Linguistically. Imi- linguistically. Um, and using images to speak for themselves um, and anecdotes to speak for themselves. And um, we read um, Sentimental Journeys in class and um, in that essay you criticize the way that the New York City Press has used this story of the Central Park jogger to be emblematic for um, the larger social problems of this city and I was wondering if you could talk a bit about <clears throat> um, the difference and the proper balance that you have to strike between um, using images and anecdotes to be emblematic while still um, doing justice to the complexity of an issue or a person? Great question, Kat, thank you. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, your, 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 your basic, your, ba- your basic <coughs> wish is to get it right. And you're not gonna get it right if, if, you, if you tell yourself a story about it. Now, what, what I discovered when I was doing that piece, I, it had begun just as a little piece about I was going to do a series of small pieces about New York because I had moved there a year before and didn't really understand the city. So I was going to learn about the city by being by reporting it. And the first, because the jogger trial was going on that summer, I was going to do the jogger trial, just just a short repertorial piece. And the first thing that happened was I couldn't get into the courtroom because I didn't have a police pass. So that, for, that, that basically forced me to the edges of the piece, which is the, where I belong anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the edges, I simply started reading a lot about Central Park and, and about the, not, the building of Central Park, which was one of the great projects of the 19th century. And it was a project that, that I realized that the very, the whole point of the project had been had been to tell a sentimental story about about the huge immigration into New York. It, it was it was it was it was the immigration was was the, the immigration. It was it, how to say this <laughs> in a short in less than twenty thousand words. Which is what I ended this up is, yeah, right. I was <laughs> yeah. um, we know you can do this. <laughs> <laughs> the um, no, I'm gonna li- I'm gonna let it lie there. But 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 it was it it took it took a long time to actually get that piece right. Kat's pointing out a paradox that you. That's, that's the strongest piece that we have where you say the sentiment, narrative is sentimental and the narrativization of a trial about a specific person dealing with a specific crime in a specific point of time gets generalized to count for all kinds of ideological and it agendas. A, it was a very dangerous piece. I mean, very daring, it, yeah. Well, dangerous. I mean, it was even the New York Review, which was publishing it, was kept having me go back over it to strengthen it, to plug up any holes because it was so... Because it would be attacked. Because it would be attacked, yeah. Yeah. And I was was so grateful later for this attention that they had given it. Which is a kind, self-effacing way of saying that Joan was right about her thinking about the trial and about the boys who were put on trial. Well, I was, I mean, my whole instinct about that was, I I had no information, obviously. I was not in the park that night. I had no, I had no way of knowing. But there was a a very ugly way about the the way the the press was treating the, the story. There was a very ugly way in which the police department was, it fell into the into the sex crimes division, which was Linda Peristine, and it seemed to have taken on colors that had nothing to do with the case itself. Right. 
when you give questions of gender and race to the sex crimes division of the New York City Police Department, you're, you're, no, you're, you're in trouble. <laughs> things are going to get mucked up. And yeah. what you did, as no one else did in that case, you refused to be blinded by any ideology at all. So I, and Miami is somewhat the same problem, although less, maybe less dangerous. No, actually just as dangerous, just as dangerous. So let me ask, yeah, more, uh, Jorge Mascanosa is a tough character. And we all had such a good time, forgive me, imagining you sitting on the other side of the table for <laughs> Jorge Mascanosa. Um, so in Miami, you, um, you don't take sides, but I have this sneaking suspicion as I'm reading it, just a sneaking one, that sometimes you were more sympathetic to the Cuban-American approach to, to the situation. To, 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 to the Miami Cuban, yeah, yeah, I was. And so when we get to your critique of Nightline, which is another zinger, uh, an easy target, I have to say, but anyway, um, uh, and you talk about the Cuban-American view of Nightline, they can't quite figure it out. Why do you have these people who are sitting in opposition, you know, uh, Ted Koppel used to get, and hear from this right side and hear from this left side, and they would talk, and the Cuban said, how could you have opposition without passion? Everybody in Miami was always mentioning Nightline as, 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 as an example of what was wrong with all Anglos, right? They could have they they could they could they could have no they could have an argument on Nightline and not be at each other's throats. Exactly. And you, I take it there, although you're very careful not to do this, you're detached. I take it that you were on the side of the critics of Nightline. Well, I had I I I, I certainly saw where they were on 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 their central issue, which was which had to do with the fact that they had been be betrayed by the United States for for at the Bay of Pigs, and the reason they had been be betrayed w had had entirely to do with American domestic politics. So since that was uh, seemed fairly obvious to me, I was ready to go along with them on their right. other on their otter. But I think wrinkles. deep down, you also liked the fact that they lived political passion. And that, as you put it in, on one page in Miami, they read everything. They read everything. And that you have to admire, right? I took, th you, you, would, you would go in for coffee someplace in the morning and people would be arguing over a column in El Pais. And where else in America are you going to yeah. find that? Yeah. Exactly. 